What's up guys, it's Dollmatter Matter here, and today we're going to be reacting to why didn't the USA ever adopt the metric system? So this is from History Matters, and if I'm not mistaken, I think it was under Jimmy Carter, they actually attempted to, but it never ended up passing through. But I imagine part of it has to do with a lot of this came out as a result of the French Revolution, which had a lot of other, I would say, socially unacceptable stuff to the Americans. I think that's probably initially why they didn't accept it, uh, but I'm not entirely sure. It's not something I've ever really looked into. That's just my guess off the top of my head. So anyway, link to the original video down below. Remember to like, comment, subscribe to help the algorithm, and let's jump right into it. Likely be aware the United States <clears throat> is one of the few countries in the world that doesn't use the metric your, your, your ways are Instead, dumb. Instead, it uses U.S. customary measurements, which is similar to the imperial system used in Britain, sort of. But given that the overwhelming... Yeah, we... So in Canada... And it's probably true in New Zealand and Australia too, although I'm not 100% sure. But in Canada, we use both systems and we go interchangeably between them all the time. It's one of like, you know, if you ask somebody how tall they are or how much they weigh, they're going to say their, their weight in pounds and they're going to say their height in feet and inches. Uh, if you measure something, <clears throat> it really depends on what you're measuring for. Uh, a lot of supplies, though, come in both metric and imperial you know like we just use both systems up here and it's something that nobody even really thinks about it's just kind of second nature to everyone in canada there is like this push to try and make it more and more metric but i think the general population just doesn't because it's so much easier just to use it's so culturally ingrained that it's just always there and it's something you learn from the point when you're a little kid but uh yeah majority of nations have adopted the metric system, this raises the question, why didn't the United States ever do the same? So, as of American independence, the new nation, unsurprisingly, used the same system of measurements as the British. And since the, even after the war, Britain was still the United States' main trading partner, it made sense to keep the system to help facilitate trade. <laughs> George Washington and Thomas Jefferson had looked into adopting a new system in 1776, but... What does that say? Uh, 10 carats equals 1 double scruple, 10 double scruples equals 1 ounce, 10 ounces equals a pound, 10 pounds is a stone, 10 stones is a consul, 10 consuls is a hog sh hog's head. Is this the actual system that they're talking about using, or is this just taking the piss? In 76, but given that they were, you know, busy, it wasn't a priority. President James Madison was a fan of the metric system, but when its use was abolished across Europe in 1812, he and many others believed that the system would die out. In the early 19th century, the British sought to standardise the measurement system its empire used, and so it created the imperial system, which had some differences to the units that Americans used. Yeah, so one ton is 2,000 pounds versus 2,240 pounds in imperial. So roughly, you know, a, a ton versus a ton. Um, basically, this one's... Not exactly, but almost fucking a uh, thousand kilograms, and this one's obviously two thousand pounds. One pint is sixteen ounces versus twenty ounces. So this is actually something that Canada still uses from the U.S. We use the sixteen ounces. I've never heard anyone refer to a pint as a twenty ounce. Uh, a gallon. We d we have different gallons here, though. That's weird. We have different gallons. So we have the same gallon as the Imperial, but the same pint as the U.S. And then ton, we use both. A lot of the time you'll hear people say ton or tone in Canada, especially like I used to work in uh, road construction, so I got the hat, um, and stuff was measured in, in like British imperial tons, and people would always refer to it as tones, which the US was a ton, the, the imperial one was a tone. That was how people always referred to it, when, like where I worked. Britain had hoped that the United States would adopt the imperial system as well, but the Americans didn't fight and win a Stay war against Canada. the British just so they could keep taking orders from them, so no. As the United States continued to grow as a chunk of international trade... As with all things in history, the US still does it the way the British used to and then the British get salty about it. ...many of its businesses started to trade with more and more nations. Austria these exists. countries used the metric system, which meant that US businesses were using both. As such, to facilitate this and to lessen trade reliance on Britain, President Andrew Johnson passed the Metric Act, which formalized conversion rates and allowed businesses to use both. So did this formal recognition of the metric system change anything? No. Well, not really. As the 20th century approached, American feelings towards the metric system hadn't changed. However, academic and scientific communities pressured successive presidents to adopt the system, but they were denied for three primary reasons. They were just told the first no. Was that doing so would require effort, and nobody wanted that. The second was that the late 19th and early 20th centuries were a fairly isolationist and patriotic period, and many Americans didn't want to adopt the foreign metric system when they were already using the American system. 
The argument was that other societies were worse than America and they used the metric system, and thus, by adopting it in the United States, it would only serve to diminish it. <laughs> the third reason was that many policymakers and manufacturing leaders in the United States believed that it was an inevitability that not only would America rise to the top of the great powers, but would eventually eclipse them all. And so why go to the cost and effort of replacing US customary measurements when the rest of the world would inevitably change for America? This line of thinking continued until the 1970s. This was when President Gerald R. Ford went the extra 1,600 109 meters in order to swap the United States over to the metric system. First, he passed a law which placed the metric system as America's preferred system. He and Congress also established the Metric Conversion Board, whose purpose was to guide industry in the country into a permanent adoption of the metric system. Uh, so I, th I knew this had happened, but I always thought it was Carter. I guess I was mistaken there. It was Ford. The problem was that the board couldn't agree on how to adopt the system, and also, nobody listened to it. And when Ronald Reagan took office in 1981, he ended the board, seeing its work as un-American. And thereafter, the attempts to change to the metric system have been unenthusiastic and unsuccessful, meaning that the United States would stay as one of the few countries in the world that didn't use the metric system. One f four freedoms equals one's constitution, 12.5 4th of July equals one fighter jet, 1776 Second Amendment equals one atom bomb, nine footballs equals one moon landing, two ball eagles equals one pickup truck, two banjos equals one Bigfoot. I love that. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and a special thanks to my patrons, James Bizonette, Kelly Moneymaker, Sky Chappelle, Corsha Wolf, Jerry Lambden. Man, uh, so yeah, that's, that's really interesting. A lot of it has to do, I guess it makes sense with, you know, American being so isolationist, and for most of their history, and even still to a large part today, most American trade's internal, right? Especially for most of their history, or at least most of the history is an independent nation. America does much more internal trade than external trade. And even nowadays, uh, I, th I think it was Peter Zihon maybe who, who said this. He's a geopolitical analyst. He said, you know, if, if all global trade shut down, uh, all global ocean trade shut down, sorry. So obviously the U.S. would still be able to trade with Mexico and Canada. The U.S. would still maintain about 90% of its economy. Whereas most other nations would completely collapse. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that the U.S. has any natural resource they need. They have all the environments they need. They have, even though they've exported a certain percentage of their industrial base, they still have a relatively large industrial base. They also have access to Canada and Mexico for laborers. Um, yeah, I guess, you know, when you don't need to, fuck it. And now you're, you know, you're a superpower now. Who gives a shit? But uh, anyway, yeah, let me know what you think below. Like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.